to an altogether loftier pursuit. The first Scottish satellite, this is not science fiction, work is going on right now on the first artificial satellite to be assembled in Scotland. It's taking shape in Glasgow and it'll be the latest milestone for a space sector which sometimes seems to be our best kept secret. Our science correspondent Kenneth MacDonald has this exclusive report. Once space exploration was the preserve of Russia and America. These days, more and more countries are joining in, some with projects costing big money, while others are making their impact with ingenuity. So what's the big idea? Well, this is, this is the basic structure of a CubeSat. It's, it's not a scale model, this is actual size, 10 centimetres by 10 by 10. It encompasses a litre. You can pack a surprising amount of science into a litre and launch it into low Earth orbit. And this isn't a theory, hundreds of them have been launched already. The original idea came from America, but 40% of all those CubeSats have had their components made here in Glasgow. It makes this company, Clyde Space, the world's biggest player in this sector of the space industry. The typical CubeSat mission was a student built satellite that would make maybe go beep or do something quite, maybe do an interesting experiment or try something out that doesn't cost a lot of money and was able to be within the grasp of a student project, maybe even a PhD project. But now it's more so serving a need, so it's serving a need for, for more, more communications or maybe taking images from space. Or some of the NASA missions, for instance, have been to, to see how um, E. coli reacts to the space environment, which is, is useful for, for all sorts of things for space exploration. So there's all, you, if you can name an application or something you could think you would want to put in space, I think there's a way of fitting that in a CubeSat really and it just really opens the mind to lots of different possibilities. Clyde Space sells satellite systems worldwide. Most of its customers are outside the EU. Now, after seven years in business, it's moving to the next stage. This may not look like much yet, but potentially it's a piece of history. It's the basic structure of a satellite called U-Cube-1. And if all goes well, in a little over a year's time, this will be the first Scottish-built satellite to enter Earth orbit. I'm the project manager for U-Cube-1, so that role involves not only managing our internal inputs into U-Cube, which is the power systems, the solar panels, the hardware, but we're also managing the payload teams. So we've got four different payloads from different universities and organisations, which will be on UCube One. So Clyde Space are actually programme managing that on behalf of the UK Space Agency. It's going to de demonstrate a whole range of new technology, uh, which to test it in space is quite hard to do. So this is what CubeSats are all about. It's low cost because it doesn't cost as much to send all the fuel to send a spaceship up there. It's our first full platform. So by demonstrating this, then we can demonstrate that we can build a full satellite and anybody can then put their own payload onto our satellite and test their stuff. But we, we've got that pedigree that we'll have a satellite that we've sent up into space. U-Cube 1 will be small, but it'll be tough too. It'll have to be to operate beyond the shelter of Earth's atmosphere. Radiation, although not as harsh as some people would, would consider, um, you get events inside computers where one bit will change from a one to a zero, which will essentially change the maths that you're doing, um, which therefore needs to be compensated for. Um, we have the thermal vacuum environment, which is this thermal cycling of very hot to very cold as the satellite passes from sunlight into eclipse. Control is central to the mission. The satellite will have to know where it is and how to manoeuvre by using the Earth's magnetic field. You need to know your camera is pointing towards the object of interest, whether that be a coastline or whether it be a star. You want it to know it's pointing in that direction. Um, also, you've got communications, uh, you've got directional antennas. Um, for high, for a lot of information, you want the antenna to be pointing towards the ground station. So as you're travelling over uh, the covered earth, you want to be able to continually point it to the one point. So you need to slowly control it and um, you do that by manipulating the magnetic field. Clyde Space is one of several Scottish companies in 
The space business in this sector has, in science as a whole, Scotland punches well above its weight, although it seems few of us are aware. People often ask me what my job is and I tell them that I'm building satellites in Mary Hill and it takes some time. Sometimes they don't believe it, sometimes they laugh at me. Given you know, Scotland's heritage of engineering across all disciplines, that it probably shouldn't be a surprise that we're, we're at the forefront of space technology. They usually don't believe me, to be honest, uh, especially girls, I'm trying to talk to them, they think I'm trying to be a spaceman or something, but uh, no, it's, 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 it's great because it's inherently interesting, once people do believe you, like, they're really interested and they really want to find out more and where we're doing it and what's involved and whether they can get involved, so yeah, that's great. Its size may suggest that UQ1 is one small step for Scotland, but in time, who knows where it might lead? Who knows indeed? Kenneth MacDonald reporting there.